Okay, hello, hi, welcome back to the channel. We're doing another tier list, and this time it's a turnstile tier list. They're probably like one of the more popular hardcore bands, and the videos that I do about turnstile on this channel, the Pit Pros, those episodes tend to do the best in comparison to the other videos on my channel. So I thought, hey, I'm going to listen to all the Turnstile records critically rather than just for enjoyment as always. And we got the tier list going here. We got the GOAT tier. We got the near perfect tier. We got the real good tier. We got the okay tier. And we got the whack as fuck tier. So we're going to use EPs and LPs in this list in kind of chronological order from like the earliest all the way to their latest stuff. And it's going to be the stuff that's found on Spotify. There was not going to be like any rare seven inches that they pressed and only sold at like a show in Wisconsin or whatever. That's not on here. We got six records, okay? We got the 2011 record, uh, Pressure to Succeed. It looks like this. Look at it. Look at that. I gotta say, you know, it was a pretty good little bouncy, little chunky little record. I really like the fucking bass line in that one song, New Rules. Right off the gate, you could tell that these guys were magic riff machines. They were just coming up with catchy, bouncy, fast, heavy, awesome riffs. And there was like a strong like vocal delivery, but it was pretty like meat and potatoes right off the bat. They were getting right to the point, which is kind of like what Turnstile became famous for. But I don't think they really like uh, defined their like their Turnstile voice, which they would go on to fucking really, really refine in the future. So I'm not going to give it uh, any of these top two tiers, but it is a real good EP. Okay, next up we're going to be talking about the 2013 EP, Step to Rhythm. I really love the fucking cover. I think the cover is sick. It's just like, you know, a mosh pit, some crazy guy doing a crazy thing in the middle of the circle circle, which you know I love to see, and this ridiculously awful font, which I love, and this stupid gradient through the font, which looks awful, but to me, I love it. It's just like such a hardcore looking record. I think that's just just amazing. So we got to put that out on the tier list here. And when I was listening to it earlier, right off the bat, the first couple songs, I'm like, oh my God, they found who they are. This sounds like Turnstile. This is like the Turnstile type riffs, but like the farther you get through the record, you're like, nah, it kind of loses steam halfway through, but it still really is a really good listen. So you got to put this thing here at the real good tier as well. Now in 2016, shit was starting to get a little bit real for them. They were starting to really find who they were, and they put out this four-song EP called Move Through Me, and fuck, man, this thing is like banger after banger after fucking banger. And if you haven't listened to this, I really suggest that you do. They really seem to have found their style. It's a thick mix on this thing. It's fast. It's tight. It's high energy. And you know it's fucking really iconic in parts. You're going to recognize a lot of the stuff off this record. But all that being said, we got to fucking throw this thing on the tier list. And it is near perfect. Okay, next up is another 2016 effort, which happens to be their very first full length. And it's, um, it's fucking amazing is what this goddamn thing is. It was on nonstop feeling that Turnstile really started to sound like Turnstile. Like, the way that this record fucking starts, the way that it just plays through every goddamn song on this thing, the way that they use, like, instrumentals as palate cleansers, which would be a a technique that they would change and refine a little bit as we move forward. But I really liked those, like, instrumentals at the time. It made for, like, a 12-song set list, and most of the songs were pretty good. You gotta say most of the songs weren't bad at all. Uh, it was near, it's, it's near perfect. It's goddamn fucking amazing. But that brings us to time and space. And this is the most special record to me, probably on this whole list. And I gotta say, every song on this thing is amazing. Uh, show me any song from your favorite artist and convince them why you like this band. <laughs> like, any song on this will do. This is a GOAT record. 
time and space. Fucking amazing. Like, their vision on this thing was through the roof. Their articulation of bringing that vision to life is just something else. The way that Bomb goes into I Don't Want to Be Blind is just some of the most amazing fucking sonic stuff my ears have ever heard. And the way they did those two songs together for the music video is just absolutely beautiful. I love this band. I love this record. This is greatest of all time. You know we stand this record over here. This thing is fucking amazing. But then we went years, okay? Years without hearing from Turnstile. It was like, where is the Turnstile record? What's going to come out? And then they dropped this project, which happened to be a fucking four-song EP with a five out of five, five out of five, five out of five, five out of five. Fucking amazing. This fucking thing was unbelievable. TLC came with a fucking long-style music video that included all the songs in one fucking go, and it's just so fucking cool. This thing was what we all wanted. We we're like, oh my god, Turnstile, oh my god, we're so hyped. And here it was. This is like a goat record after a goat record. And we we're like, okay, I can't wait until their full length comes out. What are they gonna do? And what they did was they did this thing called Glow On. And boy, do I have a lot to say about Glow On. So maybe this might be the Glow On discussion that maybe too many people are too scared to have because it's like, you know, it's not cool to say anything, um, critical about this record at the moment because everybody is loving this record but i have a couple critical things to say about this thing like um the song blackout that refrain i find that to be a little bit cringy i can't really listen to that uh, earnestly and in good faith you know, black out in the... I, I fucking can't stand that. Underwater Boy is one of the worst songs I've ever heard. I fucking hate that song. That has no place on the fucking set list. That has no place on the playlist. What is that song? It's like a total non sequitur. It's not a palate cleanser that, you know, like Moon is on the previous record. It's not like... Uh, it, it sucks. It's just like... It's a zero out of five. I don't know why it's there. I hate it so much. It's whack as fuck. So if this record, Glow On, was all songs that were fucking, like, underwater boy, then this would be a whack-as-fuck record. But a lot of the songs that were on TLC are on Glow On, and there were five out of fives there, so there are five out of fives here, so there are some, like, balancing outs that go on. Now, the song Fly Again starts off beautifully. This piano intro, it's got the chimes, it's like, okay, yeah, let's fucking go, this is gonna be so nice. But then the riff comes in and it's total garbage. It's just like, all right, let's 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 design a fucking riff and here you go. Here's a rock and roll riff. And it's not something that sounds like anything else that I listen to. And I listen to all these records all today, all one after the other. And when I get to this song, I know I don't like it. And I know it's not fun to listen to. Okay, I might be getting a little bit too passionate about it. Because, like, it still is a good song. It's a well-written song. It's a well-recorded song. And I can't hate on anybody that enjoys it. Because it is still a good song and better than... 99% of songs that exist out there in the world. But up against all these other near-perfect GOAT records, I'm like, no, man, this is falling short for me. This is falling short for me big time. And when we get to the song Dance Off, I'm like, no, we've really fallen off a cliff, Turnstile. This is no good. This is no good at all. And then right after Dance Off, you get New Heart Design, and it's even worse. <laughs> it sucks so fucking much. I'm like, no, what are you doing, Turnstile? You, you know, oh, man, this is brutal. No good. Not fun to listen to. But then we get hit with TLC, which is a bad banger song and like oh my god thank god and then no surprise you're like okay i know the song fucking phew thank god and then we get a song that we haven't heard on turnstile love connection we get a song called lonely desires to close this thing off and it's a banger it's absolutely unbelievable so i don't know like people be like hey man you can't really fucking hate on them they like to experiment and we've seen it coming that they were experimenting on previous records that isn't the problem the problem is the riffs are whack in comparison to anything else you can listen to and even songs that are on this fucking thing are five out of five on another 
project. You don't need this thing. They should have put the other five out of five songs like Lonely Desires and fucking Alien Love Call on Turnstile Love Connection and called it a day. And then I don't think that I would have had to fucking make this video and make this point about this goddamn record because it doesn't have to exist. And the chances that they took on this thing, I don't think were worth it. And I must say, I changed my mind on Alien Love Call. At first, I was like, this is a zero out of five song. I hate this thing. This is not Turnstile. This isn't Turnstile I love. Their whole record is going to suck. I hate it. But I've seen them perform it live and the audience singing along without Brendan, just like singing the whole song without him, is kind of beautiful. It's kind of one of the more beautiful, tender moments that you kind of get at a hardcore show. And I kind of love it now. It's kind of one of my favorite turnstile songs and it's weird how it it can change like that and maybe my opinion on this record would change but i don't think it needs to exist so yes i am gonna say even (laughs) i I don't i can't put it as whack as fuck because it isn't whack as fuck i tell you yeah uh yeah 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 i listen to glow on it's okay (laughs) <laughs> it's not whack as fuck. It's not real good. It's not near perfect. It's certainly not greatest of all time. So yeah, I, I guess that's going to be how I categorize uh, the turnstile uh, records that you can listen to at least on Spotify. So I don't know. What do you think? A fellow turnstile listener, sound off down there in the comments. Do you disagree? Do you agree? I know you disagree because everybody fucking loves this record, but I hope that you can listen to my rant about it and not take it personally and not take it like like an attack against the band that we all love. I'm just saying that the songs on this record in comparison to their other songs on their other records happen to be a little bit whack but it's a mixed bag because there are some great fucking songs on it but it doesn't need to exist thank you so much for watching if you liked it give a little thumbs up on it subscribe to the channel and watch one of my videos over here